Okay, hey everybody. I have already done a video on after the surgery and what happens next after the surgery, but I have a few emails and everybody is um, asking me all the questions. So instead of, you know, just going one by one, I thought I'd just do one video, start from the beginning and go all the way through. So it's, uh, you might see it up on when you do a search, you might see it come up. It's um, after uh, rotator cuff surgery, then what? So this is actually like put the cart before the horse or the after the horse, whatever. So this is actually how, what it all is. So I hurt myself, but you know, I it wasn't all that bad and um, I was pressure washing the deck and pressure washing the house, doing a whole bunch of things, mowing, just every day um, working. Um, just regular stuff and I did hurt my shoulder so it'd be my right shoulder so um anyway I kept going and it all went away and whatever for a couple months and whether you're playing sports like you could be playing baseball uh, football hockey um, anything like where you got to throw or whatever um, you can very easily you know tear your rotator cuff now um, some tears are small enough they will mend and they'll it might tear later on again down the line but um, you know scar tissue will form and it will mend it'd be probably a small very small tear and um, you'll be fine but then there's the tear that's a bigger tear and um, that's when probably surgery is going to come into the the picture but um so let me just go by in the beginning here so I was working and then I heard it again at, um, so and it was getting to be a problem just trying to do stuff my shoulder was just not cooperating then uh, November that, that was in the summer then in November I heard it again now that time was an excruciating pain it was a burning it was really really bad on the score 1 to 10 like 9 were the other pains when I would hurt it a little bit it was tolerable like 1 to 4 whatever on the scale if you're trying to describe pain but anyway this is like really bad bad it stopped you right in your tracks it made you just hold your breath I mean it was really bad and burn and I knew I had really hurt it again and that was like the third time so um in January was when my new insurance was starting so I didn't dare go to the doctor in December because this happened uh, last of November but so I scheduled a doctor's appointment in January that's when my new insurance started so um anyway when you go to the doctor and you have to go to an orthopedic surgeon is who you have to go to so maybe a friend that will refer you to someone that they liked and did well with them or you're gonna have to check um, word of mouth is great because you can ask uh, a whole bunch of questions about that doctor but um, you just gotta search for a doctor orthopedic medicine um, would be where you would want to find a, an orthopedic surgeon he's gonna be the one he or she's gonna be the one operating on your shoulder so they will ha have you come in the office they'll take an x-ray make sure the bone is fine and um, you know not broken or cracked or something and then they can't see tissues from an x-ray so they'll have to send you for an MRI a lot of times that's gonna have to be approved by your insurance company and when they get the approval for that then they'll go ahead and schedule the MRI so you go and have an MRI done I had it on the right shoulder and the study result was the impression of that was six things full thickness tear number one um, arterial uh, articular surface tear number two number three uh, partial articular surface tear of the uh, sub scrapularis number four 
tear retraction of the long head of the bicep. Number five, a small uh, joint effusion, mild de degenerative changes. That's as you get older, just your tissues change, you're wore out. Um, there might be some fraying around the shoulder. Um, it's just just from old being older. Now, if you hurt yourself when you're younger, you know you might not have that when they come up. But so degenerative uh, labral fraying is the sixth, and seven is mild moderate. It's joint degenerative changes. So, and that's in the whole shoulder. But the tears is what they're going to fix, and they're going to go in there and debreed all the little fraying. So, wherever it's loose and, um, you know, kind of sloppy and everything, they'll go in there and debreed that. Just means clean it up and fix that, and then they'll fix the tears. I have to keep checking this. this off on me so that's why you see me get up okay so that's the result of the MRI now once they have the MRI they kinda and they can see it there on the screen too um, you see all the tears and then they'll schedule you for surgery so once that's done um, then you'll come in like right before your surgery and you get fitted for this this is your brace you're gonna wear six weeks I've been four weeks now uh, as of today and I'm already starting to wean myself away from it um, it's real nice like if you do go out people stay away from you when you they see this on you they don't bump into you and you know stuff so it's nice like when you're fresh from you know out of surgery but like now I'm at four weeks and I actually have it off most of the day and sometimes the night I've been kind of seeing how I do I don't want to roll over on my shoulder and this is always a reminder not to so you'll get fitted for this and that'll be like a week or so before surgery you'll go into the office they'll have someone come and they'll fit you for the sling and then um, you, what you want to pick up is, uh, they call them a lounger, bed lounger. It's the pillow that goes behind the back, and it's got the two little arm things there. And you want to get uh, that and have about four pillows, soft pillows, that you can prop yourself up. And um, so um, you cannot sleep laying down, and you'll have to, like, prop yourself up on that lounger thing and some pillows around you to keep you upright because you're you know the pain in your shoulder um, it just won't you will not be able to lay down now if, if you have a lounger um, like a uh, bark lounger chair then you're all set because you can just sit up and then get your feet up and you can sleep that way go back a little bit so um, but you won't be able to go back far because that pressure on, on the shoulder just hurts so when you wake up from surgery they have this already on you you bring it with you the day of your surgery they bring it with you you should be at the hospital like two hours before your scheduled surgery so I had to be at 530 and then I was in surgery 730 and I was out at 10 something and then I went home at 2 something 230 I think I went home so um, it's the same day surgery so unless you have a problem whatever you would probably stay overnight you would talk that over with your doctor but um, so they go in there they fix the tears and they debreed and you know clean all that their shoulder up and so your pain medicine your muscle relaxers um, you'll be on that they'll have that ready for you as what you're going to take. Um, I'm not one that can take things like, uh, uh, well, they do give you morphine when you're in your surgery, but uh, I'm not one that can take those kind of drugs uh, without getting sick. So they always have to give me something for nausea. But you talk that over with your anesthesiologist when he comes in the room before the surgery. You tell him if you do know that you get sick from, you know, opioids or, you know, narcotics, whatever. So you discuss all the, those concerns with him. Now, I did. I said I get sick, I throw up, and they said they will give me something for nausea so that I don't. Then they asked me if I wanted a nerve block. Now, the nerve block goes in a block in the nerve. It's like a lidocaine substance, and they um, block the nerve so that it doesn't feel pain. When you wake up from your surgery, you, you won't feel 
as much. Now, yes, you will still have pain, but you it with the nerve block, it, it helps a little bit more. So I said I didn't want that because it's like a needle that I didn't really care for. So um, I said, I don't think I want that because it's going to hurt and whatever. And the anesthesiologist said, no, you will be asleep. You uh, won't even know and you won't even care what I'm doing. And I said, okay, if I'm going to be asleep, all right, then I'll trust him with that. So he said, I, he, I definitely will be asleep. So you wake up, you have this little bag hanging on your neck. So it goes around your neck. And what's in it is this here. It's a pump. And there's a gauge here. Oops. There's a gauge. Um, they set it on a certain number. And then um, there's a little pump inside of here. Let me see if I can. I can't like raise my arm very good yet. At four weeks, you still can't raise your arm. So it's better to have it down. Okay, so there's a pump in here. And this bag is full of like lidocaine, kind of like a substance. And it pumps in there. You have that for three days. And then you have someone come and help you, uh, um, someone in the family or whatever, just because it, it's in the back of your shoulder that's where they have it and um, it's just you take it out yourself or the person that's helping you is going to take it out so here it is and that goes under the skin and it delivers the lidocaine or the numbing substance to the area and you have that in for I knew it was going to shut off on me. So anyway, you go back to your doctor after your surgery at, you know, 10 days. And um, then, uh, let's see. Then after that, it's um, one month. And then when you go back one month, then after that, it's six weeks. And that's where I'm at now. So uh, therapy, physical therapy starts a uh, couple of weeks, uh, I think I was five days post-op and I already went for my consultation. I didn't do anything that day, but just talk. And um, then the next time they schedule you for once a week, physical therapy. And you start out doing simple things like just moving the wrist and whatever. And that's kind of not hard to do. That's an easy thing. And then they just kind of build you up. And I'm on therapy now twice a week instead of once a week. And therapy is for 12 weeks. So that's the repair of the rotator cuff. Now, um, before having the surgery, I was curious to about the whole thing. So... And I did go in and Google it. And so for a consult, you need an orthopedic surgeon. And um, so um, it's important to pick the right one. The sports medicine groups that in your area are good to check them out. And um, you will need an MRI and x-ray and all that, like I said before. And... Um, so now I also had a torn bicep. So my bicep um, had was a tear in that. So here's some pictures that you can see um, what it looks like. That's this is like uh, day after surgery. And in the back of my neck, you can see where I had this here thing um, going in and delivering the lidocaine. You can see that. And then in the front, you can see um, they use glue um, instead of sutures or stitches. They use glue and then they put a, it's like a clear patch over it and you keep it like that for a couple weeks and then it all heals together and like so now this is what I have 
for now. Um, I had the incision here, the probe that they use to put in like the camera that they use, it's arthroscopic surgery. They put it in here in the back, in the back of your shoulder. They, they put the probe in there and then in here. And then here they um, repaired the bicep and the rotator cuff. So, but it's all healed real good now, as you can see. So, um, yeah, and uh, you can um, just know that you're going to have to go 12 weeks for physical therapy. And um, we're still on doing uh, isometrics right now for me at f four weeks. So, and I'm going to be starting on the pulleys and stuff next week and stuff, but... The thing is, muscles get tense, and head I get headaches. And um, but if I do my exercises and try to loosen up the muscles, then I don't have the headaches so bad. So that's kind of funny how that all is. But you, you can stand; it's not you know excruciating. Hurting your shoulder in in the beginning is the excruciating. It's when you can almost feel the tendon snapping. It's all in. It's burning, but all your shoulder is is tendons and everything that hold everything up in place. And then it's it's like a ball and socket joint. So you get all the movement up and down. And and right now I can't bring my shoulder up um, about this far. I can, but. Um, I cannot, and they don't want you to bring your shoulder up. They don't want you to push that yet. They're going to work on that and loosen it up. But it's like your your arm weighs 500 pounds. Your mind, your brain is telling your arm to lift, but it won't budge. And so, but it's this arm, and I can bring it up like half, like that way, which is actually very good. And I just went to the doctor the other day, and he said, I'm right where I should be. I'm this, this is just par for the course. As you keep going, it gets better and better and better. And eventually in time, I'll be able to lift my arm over my head. Now, if you have long hair, like I know guys don't, but, well, some guys do. But um, yet that's going to be a problem. You're going to have to need help, um, someone doing your hair, because you can't lift your arm up. Don't even try, and, and you shouldn't be doing even trying that. So, um, it's you learn to let, do a lot of things with your opposite hand, the one that didn't get hurt. Um, I, my it's my right shoulder that I hurt, so my left hand or left arm has had to do just about everything. I'm not left-handed at all, so I had to learn how to eat comb my hair awkward but you get it done and um so um but all this is available to online <clears throat> bicep tears you know how they repair that and um you can find all these articles um like you know you can talk to your doctor if you have muscle spasms and or anything like that or you know what to take for pain whatever works for you because everybody has a different pain tolerance but um so the main thing is be patient do exactly what your doctor and your physical therapy tells you to do don't do any more don't do any less and just do exactly what they say recommend and um you know, protect your arms so you don't get hurt or so it doesn't hurt, get hurt again or you fall down and hurt it or something. Be very, very careful. And the, the whole thing is just um, mending and, you know, getting back to doing everything um, the way it was. And that's like three months, four months. And it can even take four, five, and six. It just depends and what your tear was like, what they all had to do when they get got in there, how they fixed it, and yourself, how motivated are you. So all that works together, and it'll be fine. And like I said, I'm at four weeks, and I'm basically fine. I have no pain right now, and actually I didn't have it three weeks. And um, the only way I'll have pain is if I go do my exercises. That might cause a little bit of pain. 
and or if I try to, you know, do something like get dressed or pull up my pants or whatever. You have to do wear loose clothes. And so have all that ahead of time before your surgery. Go out and get yourself loose clothes. It's easy to put on with your other hand. And, um, you know, if you have any problems, you have to call your doctor and, and ask them. I did have a problem, I forgot to tell you, with my blood pressure dropping. And I'm on, um, I have hypertension, so, and I do have diabetes too. So I take pills every morning for those two things. And I did have a problem with my blood pressure dropping. So I did call the doctor and they told me not to take, you know, a certain one. So that's what you have to do. Call your doctor and tell them. And, you know, have someone there to help you. Don't do it alone. Go to your family or friend's house and hang out there for a week. And then um, let them help you and monitor you. Make sure your blood pressure doesn't drop. And because narcotics will do that, make your blood pressure and your respirations uh, slower. So, and then if you're taking medication and your blood pressure is already low, then it's going to be really low. So, all those things discuss with your doctor. Tell your primary physician you're having surgery, and you know ask ask him or her. Uh, you know anything that you should know or any concerns you have talk to them and be well informed and it's all okay it's kind of uh, rough the first week but you do have medication and you can take lots of naps and eat and so get things that you like and so I never refuse mashed potatoes ever there isn't a potato that I don't like so if you have any kind of potato around, I'll eat it, even though my appetite is poor. If it's a potato, I'm more likely to say yes. So get the things that you like to eat so that you can take your medicine on a stomach that's got, you know, food in it and drink and don't get dehydrated. Those are the, some of the most important things after surgery. Do not get dehydrated. Make sure you have plenty of fluids. And the rest is just a healing process, and it can be anywhere from three to six months. So, and I'm at four weeks, and I'm actually doing, you know, pretty well, but I'm like a highly self-motivated person, and um, so that's me. But, you know, you are you, and you will be fine. Just uh, keep, you know, ask questions. And this kind of will give you a rough idea of what it all is. Because I don't think I left anything out. Other than you just have to be patient. And that's the most important thing. And um, go from there. And I hope I've answered your questions. Um, thanks for the emails. Thanks for the get well wishes. And uh, bye. See you next time when I don't have this on. Two more weeks and it's in the closet. So bye for now.